Alrighty, we've got a lot to cover, so uh, let's get into it. Um, quick show of hands uh, from everyone here. Who's had experience with SQL before? A lot of people, good. Okay, so this is uh, for you guys. Uh, feel free to doze off a little bit. Uh, the slides are going to be posted on the web. Uh, mainly, I want to kind of get across uh, kind of the, the details of SQL, the weird corner cases that you might not have experienced. So uh, basically, we'll be talking about all of the weird facets of SQL uh, and kind of trying to get you to think about how they're, they might be implemented. Uh, before I get into that, though, uh, I want to get across a couple of uh, points. Uh, so first off, I've posted a draft of the Project 1 uh, specification on, uh, on the course syllabus. Uh, have a look at it. Uh, there's still a couple of pieces that are missing from it. Uh, I'll post on Piazza and let you guys know in class when I have a final version of that posted. Uh, but this is basically to get you guys uh, to start thinking about, start implementing, uh, and give you an opportunity to, to start working towards uh, the first project. Uh, there's a couple of outlines. Look at it. If you have questions, also feel free to post them on Piazza. Uh, the other thing, uh, there, is, there will be some uh, unofficial time to meet with the TA's <coughs> recitations. Uh, I don't think we're allowed to have recitations officially, but uh, this is about as unofficial as, as we can get. I'll try and get some rooms set up uh, so that both for the uh, projects and for the midterms, uh, you'll have some chances to do problem sets, some chances to ask questions, and some chances to get uh, a little bit more uh, hands-on experience than uh, you can get with me just blabbing at you. Uh, OK, so uh, with that, uh, let's go back to our project outline. Uh, so last, the last two lectures, we covered uh, an intermediate representation called uh, relational algebra. And relational algebra is useful in that it tells us, uh, it gives us a way to express through a simple set of operators uh, the process of computing a given expression and uh, a given um, uh, computation over sets of data. And as we saw at the end of last class, there's some difference in uh, potential differences in performance uh, depending on how that relational plan is, uh, that, that uh, relational algebra expression is structured. Uh, if you do a selection before you do a join, you feed the, the output of a selection to uh, the input of a join, that's going to be potentially much more efficient. Uh, even though it's equivalent uh, to doing the selection on the, uh, after the join. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more later, but I just want to emphasize this point that uh, having this nice, simple, clean way to express uh, or plan for how you're going to uh, perform a computation uh, is really important. And while it may not uh, appear to be so in the first couple of, uh, for the first project, in project two, it's going to become uh, ridiculously important. So uh, we'll get to, I'll get to that uh, a little bit more on uh, Friday. Uh, so zooming in a little bit, uh, we have a SQL query. That SQL query, the, the pipeline is, as we've seen it so far, uh, starts with a SQL query. That SQL query uh, gets parsed into some structured representation uh, of the query itself. We translate that structured representation into a, a relational algebra expression, or uh, sometimes referred to as a logical plan. Uh, and then that logical plan gets somehow executed uh, on the data that you're given. So just to give you a brief outline of what we'll be talking about this week, uh, today we'll be talking primarily about what that uh, structured representation uh, looks like. We'll be going over SQL, and I'll be trying to point out how, uh, I'll be pointing out over the course of the lecture uh, the corresponding objects and classes uh, in JSQL parser that match up to the various construct, uh, linguistic constructs that, uh, that we'll be talking about. Uh, next lecture, uh, time, 
next lecture we'll be talking about the translation uh, from that, uh, that uh, parsed representation to a relational algebra plan. That should hopefully be uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and then starting on Friday and maybe carrying on until next week, we'll be talking about how uh, to actually take a relational plan and uh, execute it, run, compute the, the computation that it describes. Okay, that's a bit of an information dump. Uh, any questions? All right, so let's get into it. SQL has a long history. Uh, it's gone through numerous revisions and has uh, had a whole bunch of different features added to it. Uh, we'll be using a fairly substantial fragment of SQL, uh, but as it'll turn out, this fragment is actually representable very simply using uh, relational algebra and a couple of simple extensions to it. So uh, what does a SQL query look like? Well, it consists typically of three parts, a select part, a from part, and a where part. Uh, the select part tells you, uh, tells the system what you're interested in. The from part tells the system where to find what you're interested in. And the where part tells you uh, which fragment of those data sources uh, are, uh, you consider to be interesting. Um, so the relation list here is basically just a list of comma-separated uh, source relations or source tables. Uh, just says, okay, give me data from uh, the captain's relation and the first officer's relation. Uh, the target list is a list of columns or a list of expressions. And these expressions are used to generate new columns. And finally, the where clause uh, corresponds to selection. It's a list of, uh, sorry, it's a Boolean expression uh, that's evaluated over each row of the source data. And uh, if the Boolean ev expression evaluates to true, you keep the, the row. If it evaluates to false, you throw away the row. Uh, a basic SQL query, uh, there's a class in JSQL parser called plain select. That's basically what this corresponds to. Uh, you need to go through a class called uh, select. Uh, it's nested within that for a couple of different reasons. Uh, but basically all of this information is available in a class called plain select. Um, oh, sorry, uh, I'm skipping over one thing, uh, which is the distinct keyword. And the distinct keyword basically says that uh, the answer, you should get rid of duplicate values. So this basically says this query is, uh, is going to produce a set rather than a bag as output. Uh, if the dis distinct keyword isn't there, then you get a bag. If the distinct keyword is there, you get a set. Uh, so this, like I said, is uh, the, the select statement corresponds to a class called plain select. Um, all these slides are going to be, by the way, available on, uh, the, off of the syllabus as well as Piazza. Um, this corresponds to a class called plain select. And that class has a couple of different methods to give you access to each of these different attributes of the query. Uh, get distinct, uh, get select items, uh, get from item, and get joins. That's a little bit weird. I'll uh, get into how that works in a couple of slides. Uh, and get where gives you the condition. Uh, now this query basically uh, says, okay, compute the full cross product of everything in the from list, uh, in the relation list, throw, uh, do a selection predicate on top of that uh, using the where clause, and then do a projection on top of that using the target list. And then do uh, duplicate elimination if you have a distinct. Now, uh, something I want to make, uh, well, I want to reemphasize here is once again that this process, uh, cross product, select, project, is usually going to be the least efficient way of performing this query. So in the coming projects, we'll be looking at uh, ways of rewriting that basic structure to make it a little more efficient. So uh, once again, quick question. 
why have an explicit distinct keyword? Why shouldn't we just use set relational algebra for everything? Uh, can you speak up? Sorry. Not necessarily. Uh, but if it, whether it is or not, uh, why would we prefer using, or why would we want the user to do more work uh, to work with sets? Yeah. OK, so there's some cases where you'd actually want uh, multiple outputs. Actually, I think uh, maybe I misinterpreted something that you were saying. Uh, the, you would need sets as, you would need to convert from bags to sets at some point. Uh, and is, would you expect that to be cheap? Ha, uh, any thoughts on what the complexity of that would be, converting from a bag to a set? Log n, uh, n log n. Yeah, so I mean the, the process for this varies. You can, it'll either be 2n, n log n. Um, <coughs> but <coughs> finding all of the distinct values requires either building a hash table and then scanning through it to get rid of all of the duplicates, or requires uh, sorting your, your data. Uh, so that ev all of the duplicates are adjacent. And in either case, it's going to be either, it's going to be at, at, uh, linear at worst. Uh, sorry, linear in the best case. So this is a pricey operation. You don't want to be doing this for petabytes of data. Okay, um, one other uh, feature of SQL is the use of wildcards. Um, a star in the target list means all of, the, uh, all of the attributes. So if I say select star, that's basically me saying select everything, which means the projection doesn't, is a no-op. The, there is no projection, basically. Um, I can also talk about uh, relation dot star. Uh, so in this case, uh, I could use officers dot star to say give me all of the attributes from the officers relation but not any of the others. Uh, yeah, in this case the two are equivalent. So to give you an example of this, uh, I could say find me all of the officers on um, the, uh, the Enterprise, uh, ship 1701A, and that would give me all of these, uh, these, uh, these result rows. Uh, these, in JSQL parser, uh, the output, you will get in your target list either a set of expressions, uh, where expression is a class, uh, or you might get uh, all columns, uh, an instance of the all columns object, or an instance of the all table columns object. Uh, so the all table columns and all columns basically correspond to star and table dot star. Right. Uh, yep. Yeah. So starting with this, uh, find all name, all officers on the ship. Uh, if I'm looking for just the names, uh, I can replace that star with a specific uh, list of. Uh, attributes I'm interested in, so I could, uh, for example, say select o dot uh, first name, o dot last name from office officers, uh, where ship is uh, 1701A, and I'd get uh, that. Um, in order to do a uh, join, I actually have to specify all of the the pieces of that join. So. Um, for example, if I was interested in officers and ship locations, I could say, uh, give me all of the uh, data from officers, give me all of the data from ships, and then uh, find me only those pairs where uh, the, the ship is, the officer's ship corresponds to the ship's ID, and the ship's location, for example, is Vulcan. So give me the first name, the last name of all of the officers currently located on a ship at, at Vulcan. Right. 
Uh, okay. Um, a little bit more on the JSQL parser front. Uh, so I mentioned that there was this weird thing with uh, two functions to get the where clause. The first, the way JSQL parser represents this, the very first relation in that uh, source list, uh, the very first table in that source list, is going to be returned by get from item. Uh, then there's this second function called get joins. Now this is a little bit of a strange implementation, uh, but the basic idea is that a join has a left, I, sorry, a join has an implicit left item and an explicit right item. Um, so basically a join list here is going to say, give me, uh, get, from, get from item kind of gives you the first element and then get join basically says, okay, now here is another relation and this is how you're going to join that relation with everything that you've been given so far. Uh, so essentially, this says uh, if I have this relation, uh, this join between officers and ships, uh, get from item is going to give me the officers relation, and then get joins is going to give me a join saying, okay, now join uh, the ships relation to everything else. And if I add a third one, uh, there would be another entry in that list that says, okay, now join, uh, now join uh, planets with everything that you've been given so far. And the reason for this is that SQL has a couple of different non-standard ways of representing joins. Uh, for the most part, you don't need to worry about these. We'll more or less be ignoring them. Yes? Ah, yes, so there's a couple of attributes on the join, uh, the join object. Uh, what, is, what is that? Uh, come on. Stop. JSQL parser's join object has a number of attributes that describe the various features of the join. Um, so SQL has this notion of, uh, or we talked about natural joins last time. You can say uh, officers natural join ships, and that'll give you, that'll say, okay, do a natural join with between officers and ships. Uh, so it has um, the join object has a method called get natural join, which uh, it ret which returns a boolean that says uh, true if that's what the user asked if the user asked for a natural join. In this case, that's uh, in this case that's not the case. Um, one of the functions is called is simple or get is simple and that basically means that the join is a comma. It, it, there's no interesting features on the join whatsoever. Uh, this should be for all of the queries that you're working with true. Um, you can check for it but does that answer your question? Yeah. Simple join is just a cross product. Uh, simple join just just means that there are no other strange features of SQL being activated. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, outer joins. Uh, that's another feature that there are Boolean. Uh, Boolean uh, uh, attributes on the join for simple just says no other attributes have been activated um, or this is a comma or a join expressed by a comma uh, and like I said this is this should be the case for all of the queries that you encounter in in the project yes 
This is just an example. Yeah. Oh, uh, ah, that's the, so that's the thing. Um, this, the query is computing an equijoin, but with respect to the source list, um, the, the equijoin is in the where clause. So the, this, is, this is not, this query directly translates to project first name, last name, select ship equals ID, cross product between officers and ships. We'll talk about how to rearrange the relational operators. Uh, that's, that's a great uh, observation. Um, what the user intends is an equijoin, but the way it's expressed here, it's not. And one of the things we'll be talking about later in the term is how to go from uh, something that isn't an equijoin, uh, at least not structurally, into something that is. Because if it's an equijoin, you can evaluate it using a, a half a dozen algorithms more efficiently than if just as a cross product. Does that address your question? Any other questions? OK, so uh, let's keep going. SQL has this idea called range variables. And a range variable is based, another term for this uh, sometimes used is an alias. Uh, so I can express my query like this, uh, first name, last, select first name, last name from officer's ships, uh, where ship ID equals blah, 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 location equals blah, blah, blah. Uh, but what happens if uh, the same attribute appears in two different source relations? Uh, we had that uh, discussed w uh, when we talked about relational algebra. You can make the source explicit in SQL uh, by uh, prefixing the attribute with the source relation. Um, so I could say officers.firstname, officers.lastname, uh, ships.location uh, to disambiguate. If there is any ambiguity in, uh, if uh, the ships attribute appears in two different relations, I have to do this. Uh, it's an error for me not to. Of course, typing officers and ships all of the time could get a little cumbersome, so SQL also gives you the ability to rename these things. Uh, so I could say, in my source list, I could give each, uh, each source relation uh, an alias. So in this case, I could say officers O, and that says O is an alias for the uh, officers relation. Yes? What, uh, the question is, what happens if officers contains an ID attribute and ships contains an ID attribute? Um, in that case, the only way that you are allowed to reference the ID attribute is, uh, with, is by prefixing it with the relation name. So I, I couldn't use uh, ship equals ID if that's the case. I'd have to use uh, ship equals ships dot ID. Or uh, the second case, uh, officers.ship equals ship.id. Um, of course, like I said, doing that uh, repeatedly might be a little uh, cumbersome, so I can alias these relations. Uh, I can say officers O, and then use O to represent the officers relation anytime I need to do a prefix like this. As a question? You can put whatever string you want. Uh, officers OF, officers, uh, if I wanted to join the officers and the Oliver relation, I could put OF, OL. So the, the string can be arbitrarily long. It's using the first letter is common, but by no means required. Yeah, so I could, uh, if I... Uh, 
Uh, if I write, uh, Oh, so you you have to explicit uh, the the question is uh, if I understand you correctly, what happens if the, you have two words with uh, two relations with the same prefix and you use a prefix uh, in oh man I'm overloading the word prefix uh, the first two letters uh, the first letter of the rel uh, maybe through an example. Uh, so your, your question is a query like this, select O dot attribute from officers and Oliver. Ah, uh, I see that. So the, um, you, expli you have to explicitly indicate what the label for each attribute is. So this wouldn't work because I don't have, uh, I don't have either of these aliased, or I don't have range variables for either of these. Uh, so I'd have to go O F. Uh, or sorry, no, the comma would be F. So if I aliased Oliver to O and officers to OF, then this would refer to Oliver. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes? No. Uh, alias the question is, does aliasing help performance? Uh, the answer is, this is just a way of uh, making your queries more readable. All right. Yeah. So JSQL parser calls this an alias, and uh, typically you'll see this in the uh, as a attribute of the table object in JSQL parser. Mainly, I just want to give you guys uh, an idea of what occurs in JSQL parser, so that you can you're not starting completely from the ground up. Okay. Uh, Right. So typically it's a uh, good practice to use these. It makes your code more readable and it disambiguates uh, ambiguous statements. Uh, it's not required, but usually encouraged. All right. So we've talked about sources. Uh, let's talk about expressions, uh, both Boolean and uh, more complex expressions. So in the uh, select clause, you can have arbitrary arithmetic, arbitrary, uh, basically any kind of functional expression uh, to compute values that you might be interested in. So, uh, for example, I might be interested in 20% uh, of an officer's age. Uh, I might be interested in 30% of, 300% uh, of an officer's age. Maybe I'm uh, in a, a time travel episode or something. Uh, the idea is basically I can perform these arbitrary computations uh, to define new columns if I want. Now, of course, a new column uh, isn't named until I explicitly give it a name. So SQL defines two ways of uh, giving an attribute a name, uh, either using attribute equals and then expression, uh, or by using uh, as. So I type expression, as, and then a name for that for that new attribute that I've just created. Questions on this? So there's a uh, class called uh, target column that uh, covers the, the as element of uh, SQL. Expressions can manipulate strings, so you're allowed to have um, things like wildcards. Uh, in order to make a string in SQL, uh, you need to use single quotes. Uh, this trips me up all the time. It trips a lot of people up. Uh, unlike C or many other languages, uh, double quotes have a completely different meaning in SQL. Uh, you need to use single quotes. Uh, just a quick heads up. Uh, you can do pattern matching. So there's this operator called like, uh, which you can think of as a simpler form of regex or regular expressions. Um, 
the percent sign basically sa matches uh, is a wild card for strings. Uh, zero more characters. Um, anyone familiar with regex? Uh, this is dot star, essentially. Um, underscore also uh, matches one uh, single character. Uh, so this is the regex dot. Uh, questions on strings? Or anything up to the, yes? Uh, what do you mean S? Oh, <sighs> thank you. Better? Any other questions? This is, this is my way of uh, keeping you guys on the ball, making sure that you're awake. I'll sprinkle these little typos in here and there. Yeah? Uh, percent percent, I believe, means a percent symbol. I'd have to look that up. I'll uh, do so and get back to you uh, the start, uh, on Piazza later today. Any other questions? All right. Um, so you can express union in SQL as well. You can do select union and then another select. Uh, this is represented. Uh, in JSQL parser as uh, using a class appropriately named union. Um, both union and plain select are instances of a interface called select body, which means they're more or less interchangeable. Uh, union also has a method called get plain selects, which returns to you all of the uh, select statements as basically a giant list. Um, fairly straightforward. All right, now the interesting bits. Um, here's a query. What do you think this query is going to compute? OK, so the first name and the last name of officers who have visited uh, Vulcan at some point. Um, so. In queries are essentially a way of putting one query. Uh, this probably this uh, completely dates me, but yo dog, I heard you like queries, so I put a query in your query so that you can. Oh, tough room. Uh, so the uh, this idea is basically you put um, a quer one query inside your. Uh, uh, one query that computes a list of possibilities and in basically says, okay, return, me, uh, return true if the value in the left-hand side of the in appears in the list that gets computed. Uh, so in this case, uh, find me all officers who have visited, or a list of all officers who have visited Vulcan, and then return me the first officer who is in that list. Uh, there's a equivalent not in uh, that lets you negate that. One uh, key bit is that the in query can only have um, can only have one attribute in the uh, in the target list. Uh, let's see. There's also this idea of um, there's also another one called exists. Uh, exists basically says return true if the list has at least one element in it. Uh, so in this case. I have uh, find me all officers. Find me a list of all of the visits that this particular officer has made to Vulcan, and if that list has at least one element in it, then return true. In other words, if the officer has visited Vulcan at least once, then return true. Uh, the nested query can refer to attributes outside of the query. Uh, so in this case, officer.id comes from outside of the query. It's a little bit weird, and implementing this in project three, I believe, is going to be a little bit tricky. So far, you don't need to worry about this, uh, but something to be aware of. Any questions? Yes? Can 
yeah, uh, the question is, can you use multiple ins in a single query? And the answer is yes. Uh, you can have uh, as many in statements as uh, you want. And there's a couple of, uh, we'll talk about optim, I think, yeah, we should be able to talk about um, ways of optimizing uh, in statements a little bit later in the term. Yeah. So the, the question is, if I understand you correctly, that how will the outer query know which officers the inner query returns? Is that a fair assessment? Um, so the idea, at least naively, the way that you would implement this is to run the nested query once for every row of the outer relation. Um, that's by far not the best way of doing it, but naively, the, the way that you would evaluate this is exactly the way that you would evaluate an arithmetic expression, uh, 2 plus 3, um, except here, the 3 is actually a really complex computation that uh, involves bringing your full relational query engine to bear. Um, so because you're evaluating this once for every officer ID, you know what the officer ID is, so you essentially run the query, but plugging in that value uh, as you execute it. Does that answer your question? Uh, like I said, that's a horrible way to actually do it. Uh, a couple of major database systems actually do it that way, which is why you shouldn't, uh, should be aware of it so that you don't write queries like this. Uh, but there's a couple of ways of doing it, uh, of looking at this query and kind of rearranging it. Uh, how would you do this query more efficiently, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, so this query could be essentially rephrased as, uh, could be completely rewritten as an equijoin. And in fact, most exists queries can be. Uh, particularly when the uh, correlated attribute is correlated on an equality predicate. Um, there's a handful of other ways of doing it. We'll talk about them later in the term. Uh, so for every, uh, every one of these operators, there's a corresponding not equivalent. Um, and there's also this uh, greater than any greater than uh, all. What would this query, what do you think this query computes? Yeah. So it returns all of the officers ranking higher than all of the officers on the enterprise. Uh, yeah. Um, there's a class for this, all comparison exper uh, expression. So this, as with the, uh, as with the in operator, this computes a list of values and greater than, and then comparison operation all basically says uh, returns true if the comparison operation is true for every uh, uh, for every value that uh, gets returned in that list. Now the last type of nesting, and this one differs a little bit, uh, is nesting in the from clause. Uh, so you can take a select query and you can basically stick it in the source list. Uh, the main, I mean, queries produce relations. They, the output of a query is just another relation. Uh, so there's no reason you can't do this. Um, the main uh, key feature of this is that you need to give the query an alias. Um, because there's no default, there's no uh, 
well, I can't call that officers who have visited Andoria uh, because the database system isn't smart enough to figure that out. I have to say, I have to give it an, an explicit label to refer to. OK. Uh, oh, and this, is, this corresponds to a class called subselect. All right, here's another query. This one, what does it compute? Yep. So this computes the number of officers on the enterprise. Um, and this is what's known as an aggregate operation. Uh, there's a couple of these functions uh, for computing aggregate values. Uh, count is one of them, or count star is one of them. Um, there's also count distinct. Uh, give me the number of distinct values of a given attribute. Uh, there is some distinct, uh, some which could also be some distinct. Um, average, min, and max. Uh, these are pretty much the, the common ones. Uh, they're the ones that you'll be required to implement over the course of the project. And uh, they're pretty much the easily the most common ones. Uh, any questions so far? The question is, if you have five attributes and you count distinct off of two columns, what happens? Uh, the number of, you, you can think of this as doing a select distinct on those two columns. So projecting down to the set, or doing a set projection down to those two columns and then counting the number of rows in that set. Does that answer your question? So the number of unique, if you have one attribute, it's the number of unique values of that one attribute. If you have two attributes, it's the number of unique pairings of those two attributes. Same thing for three and four. Any other questions? All right. We did that one. Um, OK. So this query. Uh, technically wouldn't pass muster with a SQL compiler. Why? Uh, 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 speak up. Ah, there you go. So the um, average returns one value for the entire input, whereas name returns many values. Uh, this doesn't make sense. Uh, so you can't combine. You can't combine aggregate and non-aggregate uh, values. However, um, there is this idea called grouping. So there's a process called group by uh, that makes this query legal. It basically says, OK, let me take all of the, uh, all of the officer names, uh, and for every officer name, compute the average age for that particular name, or that particular first name. Ah, sorry, ship name. Thank you. Uh, find me all of the average age for every officer aboard every given ship. So I'm grouping officers by ship, and then I'm computing averages uh, for uh, averages for each ship. Uh, making this a little more general, there's a group by. This adds two new clauses: uh, group by clause and a having clause. Uh, so the group by uh, clause basically says. What are the attributes that we're going to group by? And then the having clause is basically just syntactic sugar that allows us to make the uh, to do queries after uh, the aggregation is performed. Uh, so this is going to uh, well, the distinction between condition and having is that condition gets applied before you do the aggregation, having gets applied after you do the aggregation. Um, and as with all of these, uh, JSQL parser has uh, classes for each of them. Uh, the, sorry, methods off of plain select uh, for each of them. So uh, 
get group by column references gives you the group by uh, get having gives you the having condition. All right. Do do do. All right. Let's finish with. Uh, let's finish with this. No. Ah. Uh, one second. Uh. I'll post these on Piazza. Uh, let's finish with a couple of final bits. There's one more uh, clause called order by limit. Uh, this allows us to implement uh, list based properties uh, in the return value. So order by is going to give us a way of ordering the elements. Uh, and then limit is going to say, OK, now give me the first five elements uh, that you return. A couple of other terms here. Uh, let's see. Skip those. Ah, OK. So the last bit I want to cover uh, today is uh, how you can use SQL to uh, not just a query, but to define the data and uh, insert data values, define schemas, and all of these things. Because this is uh, defining schemas is going to be uh, relevant for the project. So to define a relation, uh, there's a uh, statement called create table. Uh, create table takes a uh, name for the table to create, as well as a list of parameter type pairs. Uh, I could say, uh, so in this case, I'm defining the officer's relation as having a first name attribute, uh, which is a character string, a last name attribute, character string, and so forth. Um, so the schema it defines both the names of all of the attributes as well as their types. Uh, you can, in the project, We'll be using create table as a way of a convenient way of defining schemas. Um, we won't be using any of the data manipulation primitives, but this is basically how you're going to get uh, the schemas of the relations that you're going to be querying, uh, so that you don't have to do uh, any kind of schema persistence. Um, should make things a little easier. We'll go over how that works on when we review the project uh, project one. Uh, you can modify relations. Uh, you can delete them by using drop table. You can add attributes, add columns, modify various parameters using alter table. Uh, and there are operations for doing insertions uh, as well as deletions of records. Uh, interesting thing about the deletions is that you don't delete specific records. You don't hand it a pointer and say, delete this specific record. Uh, instead, you give it a predicate. You say, delete the records for which the following condition holds. Uh, so I could delete uh, the records where o.ship equals 2,000. Um, now, this is a side effect of us not wanting to consider the uh, SQL is declarative. Uh, so you, you don't specify, uh, you don't work with things like pointers. Everything is, is meant to be relational. Uh, but this essentially allows us to get relatively close. Um, OK, uh, so basically that's about it. Uh, we've talked about select. Uh, we've talked about uh, how select has lots and lots of weird features that correspond to different aspects of relational algebra. Uh, I'll try and strengthen these relational, uh, these connections next week or next uh, lecture when I talk about how uh, to translate from SQL to relational algebra. Uh, but that's about it. Any questions?
Ja. The question is, in the project, are you supposed to use create table to get a uh, idea of what the schema is? And that's uh, correct. You'll be getting queries, and you'll be getting create table statements. Uh, the create table statement statements are there exclusively to give you schema information. Uh, so for example, I could say create table r, a int, b int, c int, uh, select something from r. You don't have to do any work to create a table. You, all you have to do is pull the schema information out of that create table statement, save that somewhere, uh, and but you'll be getting that in all of the queries that you'll be getting both a create table statement as well as a SQL query. All right, uh, see everyone on uh, Wednesday.